Hi, welcome everyone. It's Chris Petri. Thanks so much for coming by. We're going to do a wonderful cafe scene here. We're going to have figures. We're going to have some architecture. We're going to use our ruler. We're going to use some tape, some uh, artist tape to create some really beautiful lines in this painting. We're going to do some different techniques. We're going to do the glazing technique, most importantly, which we use here on a constant basis on our uh, Extreme Beginner series video. So just have a great time with this. Have fun. Um, and again, this is an extreme beginners video, so you're actually going to act, you know, jump right in and just kind of follow along and um, step by step. The drawing takes a little bit of time, but you will see that once you get that drawing and pencil lines on the paper, the painting goes so much uh, quick. It goes quick and it goes easy and you will have a really, really fun time. I explain everything that you're going to need to know. I explain all the colors that we're going to use in our palette. We're going to explain to you all of the brushes that we're going to use. We're going to use flat brushes, round brushes. We're going to use a pencil, of course, to do our drawing. We're going to kind of we're going to use some artist tape to get some of these straight lines on our paper perfectly. So we're going to cover the whole enchilada here. Everything soup to, soup to nuts. Uh, we're just going to jump right in and have a fun time. So grab all your gear, grab your pencils, paper, paints, and uh, we'll be right back to start the pencil drawing and the layout of the painting and then get right into the painting portion. All right, we just saw the finished painting and we're actually uh, getting back started here uh, with the drawing portion of our video. And uh, again, this is an extreme beginner, so uh, video and tutorial. So here we're just going to talk about, we're doing a cafe scene, an interior cafe scene, and we're just going to really focus in on the basic drawing when we start out, and it's not complicated whatsoever. And then um, once we start painting, it captures the whole beautiful mood of this scene. So we have the, um, I have the photograph here that I looked up on the internet, just a simple internet picture of a cafe, two people chatting in the cafe. Uh, looking out the window, it's really an interesting kind of um, uh, scene. I think it really uh, is thought-provoking and, and interesting. So let's get started. The first thing I think I noticed was um, it really has a good overall basic um, design of where the windows and the walls and things kind of sit in the rectangle. So what we'll do is we'll just get our um, rectangle started with just a simple pencil line around the exterior of our rectangle just so we know okay we got we have this rectangle here we have to work with and let's get things settled in that rectangle so we just it's kind of like a when we draw the rectangle on our paper it automatically kind of clicks into our mind all right we've got the rectangle here now we have to start putting things in here in a sensible way and that's what we're going to do so we're just basically going to transfer what we see here in this photograph right down onto the paper. So what I'm looking at is basically um, the um, this uh, section of wall over here is about three quarters away across or one quarter away across the page here. So if you can imagine, we could all, always take our paper and divide it in half and say that's about halfway there. So we can say, okay, that's about halfway on the paper, the rectangle. And then we have another quarter of the way here. And then maybe another quarter of the way here. So we have one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters makes up the whole. Kind of just a simple idea of breaking our painting down into smaller uh, sections. So we're going to say that this wall here is about three quarters of the way across. So we can sort of take that and just take that wall and just sort of make a large you can use a ruler at this point or anything like that that's fine that works out usually pretty good if you can grab a ruler and let's see if I have one handy okay so I have a ruler here I'll take this ruler just so I can keep this line a little bit straight you know if you have a really good feel for straightness and plumb plumb lines then that's fine you don't really need to maybe use a ruler so much, but I think this will help just to, for me to start out with a good couple good plumb lines here, like that, just to start out like this. Okay, so now we have that area here, and then maybe across here, up above here, is the window, the sash of the window up here, so we can do that. 
but let's kind of get our get our idea here. All right, so we have the this section here of the wall, and then over here we have another bit of wall over here. So let's take another straight plumb line up this way. And you can always do this too if you want to make sure you're absolutely straight with your lines. You can just measure right over from the side of your edge of your paper and say, well, what is that? Oh, that's three quarters of an inch. And you can measure down here too and say, well, what's this? Yeah, that's three quarters of an inch. So if you make a little dot or a line just to make two dots, three quarters of an inch here, a dot there, three quarters of an inch over from the edge like that. And then you take your ruler and you just line up the two dots and that gives you your straight line. So you can do it that way and it really helps. And um, this is going to be just a little bit below the top of the page, this sash of the window. It's a really large window and it's got a decent weightiness to it there. And you don't have to worry if everything doesn't come out perfect as far as proportions and things like that. So this looks pretty good. It's kind of like a large square here. And then now we'll come down from the top of the window and we'll say, where are the figures here? We're just going to have two figures chatting here, having coffee. And um, looking out the window, chatting, talking. And it's interesting, it's that cafe feel. Um, I would say up from the bottom of the paper, that's about a third of the way up is the bottom of the window. So one third, two thirds, three thirds, maybe a little bit below two thirds. So if we went and made this into thirds, we'd have a third here and a third here. One thirds, two thirds, and three thirds. And it's a little bit below the first third, I would say, that window sill. So I'll maybe... Maybe I'll do something like that, and then I'll take my ruler again, and I think ruler a ruler is a good tool here for this type of uh, layout when we're doing this drawing. Not absolutely necessary, but it does kind of help. So there we have a light pencil line there across for the bottom of that window sill there. So now we have basically a good, solid uh, representation of what we're seeing here, the window and the cafe. And then over here, we do notice maybe that some of these lines do transfer over. There is a line in the window, which is a decorative um, pinstriping on the window. So if we put that here a little bit up on the bottom of this window here, just a really light line, just to kind of notate that there, we notice that that same line almost transfers over here to this wall over here, which I think is beyond over here so not to be too critical of things but it does look like it's a little bit below that below this line here so I'll go a little bit lower here and then we'll have a bit of a trim here on this exterior wall outside the cafe so I think this is the perhaps um, another window here in the cafe and we're looking through the window and seeing some of the other uh, sites outside the window, but we're not going to do any details in here. On this side here, it's going to be more abstract. We're not going to get too caught up in a lot of uh, details. We're just going to sort of keep this uh, nice and simple, just some simple shapes. So I'll just put this white, um, looks like a uh, perhaps a trim of some sort. Not sure what that is, but it's a good shape. We can get in here and make it look interesting. It gives us some um, interesting shapes and subject matter within this painting. So you can see I did the, looks like a trim, some kind of like molding or trim here, which is kind of, you know, a couple inches tall. That's here. And then up here, it's a little wider. There might be something else over here. I'm not sure what that is, but I put it in. Just some more subject matter that we can put into the painting. Um, that's going to give us some lines and some interesting uh, subject matter. And then we have here these lines which are um, frosted glass, which has the um, that feel of like a shutter or like, a, yeah, basically like shutters. But it's frosted glass actually, so it's actually a, 
of frosting that they put on the glass. And I'll just try to get some of those in a little bit. Just to remind me, I need to paint those in a little bit. So I'll put them here and there, like a hit and miss kind of thing. I'm not going to draw in every single one, just to do that. I think they're up here, more or less. And then they're also uh, down here, about here. There's some more frosting on the glass. So I think if I just put a couple lines here, I'm not going to go again with too much detail. I'm just putting a few lines across and then maybe over here, a couple here, just a little more detail there. Okay, so I kind of have the feel for that. And what else will we do? All right, let's start to capture some details in here. Um, I would say let's get this, um, and I would say... I'm going to make this a little bit wider over here. So I want to make this more um, square, if you can imagine. That's more a square type shape. So I'll do another bit here. And what I'll do is I'll just build, build this line over here on the right side out into the picture this way, and then I'll build these lines out this way, going this way into the picture, so I can capture that square kind of feel for this window here. It's a little bit too much of a rectangle. I think it needs to be more square. So I'll just make this a little wider. I think that'll be okay. And I'm not gonna go for perfection, but let's try to get that a little bit more square. Okay, that looks better. And then we can just lift up these lines here a little bit that we created before. You can always go in with your eraser and you can leave some of these lines in too. We might want to leave some of those lines in for sort of like um, some interesting lines within the painting. Most of the lines in this painting are uh, horizontal going across with all the frosting on the window. So that is going to be a good design feature of the painting. That's going to make it look really good. And uh, so we're going to do more frosting up here on the windows. Again, just lines we're going to remember to put in to the painting. Horizontal lines across the windows here. And I'll just put in some indications there with this ruler, just like that. And then the same thing over here. Here and here. And what we'll do is now we're going to take a break. Um, I always take breaks and the reason I do that is, wow, when we are concentrating on a drawing and a layout and a design like this, it's always helpful to take a bit of a break. It really does, really does help. I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll take some breaks here and there as you're doing your layout and your design of your drawing. And again, um, I'm hoping that you're going to subscribe on the right hand side below in the video. If you like this video and if you think it's uh, worthwhile to continue uh, following my channel, Again, when you subscribe on the right-hand side below, when you click on that subscribe button, and also there's some notification bell signs underneath the subscribe. So when you hit subscribe, you'll see the bells. If you click on the very top bell, that means just each time we create a new video, you'll be alerted on your YouTube channel um, that we've created a new video. And that's all that that is. If there's no obligations. You don't get any emails or text messages or phone calls or anything like that. It's just YouTube's way of saying, if you like my channel, you like my content, you like my painting, and you like working here all together, we're all working together as watercolor artists. If you like that idea of getting together on a regular basis, YouTube is just going to make it easier for you uh, so that you can uh, see our new videos coming out right away in your uh, channel. So whenever you open up YouTube, you'll notice that you'll see my video um, pop up in your screen on the right hand side. Usually you'll see my video as well as all the other favorites that you like to watch. So that's all that does really is the uh, subscribe is just a way of keeping in, in touch with me and our, what we do here on our channel. So I'm hoping you really enjoy our watercolor uh, journey together as we work. I'm going to again take a quick break. We'll come right back. We're going to finish up the figures in this scene here you can see in the photograph. And it's kind of a darker, really moody type of interesting painting that we're going to do here. And again, nothing too... Um, uh, nothing too... 
uh, intricate with this or difficult about this. It's just a matter of starting in the beginning, getting the proper pencil lines on the paper like we did. And, and that's really, once you have those the basic design and pencil lines down on your paper, then, then you're good to go. Then it's just the painting's the more fun part. You're just going to be enjoying putting the washes on. And we're going to show you in just a few minutes how we get started with our washes. All right, so um, let's take a quick break. We'll come right back. We'll draw in our figures, some chairs, a few little other details, and we'll be right into the painting portion, and you're going to have a really fun time uh, painting along with us here. All right, so we are going to um, continue with our drawing, and I think we're pretty much at the point where we can get our figures in now and a few other details. I think uh, what I'll do is maybe I'll do the figures first, the two figures, and then once we get that completed, we will... Um, we're going to keep this simple again. We're not going to go to... Um, So I'm just going to go here with um, this figure. There's a chair here, so I will put a chair like this here. So just to, I'm putting a, a chair there, the back of a chair, and then the figure here. And we'll put the um, head shape here like this and then we will um, bring the chest area down like this the back is up higher the chest is a little bit lower and uh, the head shape is here we see a little bit of the figure's nose here just a tiny bit of that the figure here has um, his arm Perhaps he's uh, having a cigarette or something, so we'll just put the we'll put the hand up like so, and uh, and the sleeve there. And we'll bring that. And once we start painting it, you 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 really always remember as a watercolor artist when you're when you're drawing your your um, figures and your drawings and your details as far as your pencil drawing. It always looks a little awkward, the pencil drawings, for some reason. I don't know why that is. I can't figure it out. I've been painting and drawing a long time. But I always know that once you start painting something, it just smooths out any kind of like like issues or seemingly like problems with the drawing. You can always add a little bit of paint here and there to make something a little larger or, or a little smaller. You know, just always remember when you're getting in there and doing the painting, then everything comes together real nice. So don't get uh, too worried about your drawing. Just get the basic essence of what you're seeing uh, when you're drawing, and that's all you have to worry about. You don't need to worry and stress over every pencil line and shape and things like that, as long as you get the basic shape. So you can kind of see I got the basic shape of the shoulders up here, higher up, the shape of the head, which is an oval, and then the hand, maybe smoking a cigarette here, and um, or a cigar, and uh, or maybe even taking a sip of some coffee, um, and then uh, the arm coming down, and then that's all we need there, and that'll be fine. And then over here we have the other figure, and this figure is, if we look at the, um, we'll do the curtain rod. There's a curtain rod across this window here, and it's just above here. It's just above this figure's head here. You can kind of see that curtain rod there. So we'll put that curtain rod across like that. That gives us a good point of how, what height do we want to make this figure's head? We kind of see it's a little bit lower, especially now that we drew in that curtain rod like that across. Then we can see, yes, this person here sitting here is a little bit lower. Um, in, in this scene here. His head's closer to that curtain rod, so I know I'm going to take this figure and I'm going to come up here and then I'm going to make this figure's head a little bit sh short of that uh, curtain rod. Like that. 
And this figure has it on a hat. Like that. So I'll make sure I make a little bit of a brim there. And this figure has also, we see a little bit of the nose. Just a touch of the nose there on this figure. And again, sometimes I'll slim things down. I just take my eraser and slim some things down if I have to on the drawing if I need to. And uh, over here on the front side too, like that. Okay, and I think that's fine. And then we have the chest coming down here with the shirt. And then we have the shoulder over here of the figure. And this is all dark over here, all dark in the shadow. So you're not going to see too much of this, the details of this figure. But we do have the figure here. And then uh, he has some short sleeves on. Maybe his sleeves are rolled up. And his arm is across the uh, chair here, or the table, I should say. And then his arm comes across here to about here. So his arm extends out this way and his hand over here. And not too much detail on that. Just a little bit of an arm there. Like so. And then we're going to do some drapes over here. So these are the drapes and they're sort of right there. Right in front of the front portion of his uh, face of this figure over here. Like that. And then these curtains over here are um, along behind this figure over here on the left side. And then we can again get some more shapes here if we want. But a lot of it, it's in dark. You can kind of see we're painting into the light. So the light's coming through the windows. So the bright light is coming. It's like a, a daytime. Maybe it looks like it's overcast out. Not bright sunlight, but very bright. Maybe a, a cloudy day with lots of light out in this street here. And the light's coming through the window. And we're seeing like the silhouettes of these figures. And the silhouettes of the walls and the windows on this interior. So it gives us a fun time of kind of, you know... Um, Painting into the light is really a great way to paint where the light's coming at us, facing us, because this way it kind of like gives us a rest. We don't have to worry about all the nitty gritty details of the figures here in this painting or the chairs or the interior space. We're basically just seeing large blocks of darks. That's all that is. It's nothing really um, too, you know, um, profound. It's just that idea of when you're painting into the light, you get a break with as far as some of the details. You don't have to paint as much detail uh, a lot of times in a painting like that. So we got we have our figures in here. We, we've done a good job. Good. This is good. Good work. And now we're going to um, we're going to put in some of this. Um, I would. This is like. Um, This is the um, pinstriping on the windows. So these windows have some pinstriping on there. Like that, some pinstriping, really nice. And then we're gonna try to, let's see if we can try to get the cafe uh, writing on here. But that's gonna be, let's take a break, cause that's gonna, that's not going to be easy. We're going to kind of make it abstract, though. Um, that looks a little bit too much uh, of a... It's a soft, kind of like a soft curve that we're going to try to do here. And I have to make it lower. I can kind of see here. You, uh, let's get this lampshade in here. So there's a light coming from the top here um, in this picture. It's a little bit off-center. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to make this light a little bit off-center. Like that. 
so that light's coming down from the top of the picture. And then we have underneath that the writing of the cafe. So we're just going to, and it's very, very soft kind of arch or uh, curve here. It's not a real, like it doesn't look like a real arch, like a 360 degree circle, you know, maybe like a 180 or anything like that of a circle. So it's a soft arch here. And then we're going to make it so that we have an even line going all the way across where this soft arch here is to get our our writing of our cafe and then there's an right along where this curtain rod is we do see the address of uh, the um year so there's a year here and we're going to put the year in and also the name of the cafe here but ab do it, we're going to do it in an abstract way, but we definitely want to put in some pencil lines to help us. So then once when we're painting this and we're getting to the end of the painting, we're going to do some of the final details of the painting. We'll just want to have basically uh, a little bit of a light pencil line of the writing called Cafe Brasilero. And uh, 1877, I think. So we'll come back. We'll finish up this little bit of uh, calligraphy here on this window and we'll be ready to paint. So I'm glad you're patient. And again, this is an Extreme Beginners series video, and you can always take this type of video and make it more simple for yourself. You, you can maybe, um, maybe you don't want to get involved with as much details as I have created here. Maybe you can get just the basic idea of things, maybe just the basic um, large, um, bits of darks here framing out where the two figures are and maybe you're just going to put in a couple figures and frame out some darks around that with a lampshade and you know maybe just and that might be enough but if you just want to take your time you can get all of this in here it's not too difficult uh, you kind of saw how we've done this so far you've observed our careful step by step just going through and transferring what we see up here in our photograph down into the paper and then once if this is pretty much this is good now we just have to do maybe one more bit of detail with the um, cafe um, lettering on the window and we'll be all set and ready to start painting okay so we'll come right back we'll just take a quick five minute break all right so we are getting prepped let's uh i'm just gonna wipe down the palette a little bit here before we start painting so I'll just kind of, um, I use some spritzer bottle just to clean up the palette a little bit. And then we'll go back in and let's get some of this, um, so we're just going to get some of this writing on here. And I'm writing it backwards and it's not too difficult because I kind of have the I have the um, the photograph right here in front of me so I can just sort of work this along And then this is um, 18, 77, like that. All right, perfect. So we have pretty much all the details that we needed here. And uh, there might be another bit of... Um, there's some of that... Uh, And striping on the window and I think that's good all right so we're ready to paint let's start out with our um, light washes first we're going to use the glazing technique which is we start out with fresh clean water and then we um, want to get some really good washes on here um, we, we're going to pre-wet the paper a little bit I'll get some fresh clean water in the palette first here 
okay and then we're going to do uh, colors that I can see in the painting we have some blue and I'll actually spritz the um, paint so it's always good to give the paint a quick spritz before we start working and then right away this Prang Oval 16 paint set that I use that we use here on you know on my channel I know many of you are using this Prang set it's great you just spritz it and within a, like 10 seconds it's already the paint is really great and just ready to work with so I'm gonna use um, again some kind of a yellow ochre type color which would be my lemon yellow a little bit of orange and lemon yellow together and maybe a little bit of the brown and that gives us a nice raw sienna uh, yellow ochre type feel color which is wonderful and then uh, maybe some red up here and some orange darker the uh, more of the um, red orange and red up here red orange and red so we're kind of getting a good mix of colors and then also some green so I'm going to use some green as well here this is kind of like a real wonderful mix of colors in the outside of the cafe where we have all that light you can kind of see that the bright colors are a mixture of warm and cool colors like the oranges and the reds and the blues and greens so what we'll do is we'll we'll cover the whole paper with the light wash and then once that dries we'll go over with the darker washes so right now it's very uh, it's a fun time right now it's the beginning of the painting you're doing your glazing technique you're doing your first washes we can actually put on some um, some fresh clean water on the paper just like this some fresh clean water across the whole paper it doesn't have to be you know perfectly even just let's get some water throughout the whole paper a light dampness to it is fine that's good then we go in and we just start picking up our blues like this we'll take some blue like that and some green some green we're gonna get some green on there too like that just a little bit everywhere then some of the gold and we're just gonna blend those colors on the whole canvas or the whole paper the whole way through just like this and the red too And as you can see, we have like a basic um, bit of light wash over the whole paper, mixing in all of the colors that we have out here on the palette, which was greens, blues, gold, and a little bit of red. just like that and that's gonna dry light too that's gonna dry very light actually and um, but this is the, the key point of the glazing technique as I always mention we have to let this dry now this has to completely dry 100% before we go in and start painting in all the darks of the figures and things like this so that's just a great perfect time to take a break uh, I usually use a blow dryer to blow dry off my painting for about five minutes and it works perfect five minutes and usually everything is dry 100% or if you're going to wait, it might be two to three hours, you might have to wait if you're not going to use a blow dryer and you just want to let it dry naturally. It tends to be a better quality painting if you let it dry naturally and not use the blow dryer. Because the, the paints and the water actually sink down into the fibers of the paper. And it, I think it just has a better look to it when you let it dry naturally. But we're working here on a composition and um, I don't think it's so critical that we want to let it dry naturally. But you can do that. That's, that's totally fine. So um, again, I'll take a quick few minutes to blow dry my painting while I shut the camera off and I'll be right back. All right, so we're continuing on here. Let's get uh, a few 
uh, interesting uh, techniques going here. Um, sometimes you can utilize some really good drafting tape or uh, artist tape to maybe section off some areas so that you can do some large washes and kind of keep the lines really uh, good and straight. We did draw in our a lot of the lines for the walls and the windows and things in our painting with pencil lines with our ruler so you remember that we did use our ruler. We really worked hard to kind of get a good accurate um, bit of uh, architectural features in this um, painting completed. And again if you went with a more simple approach and you didn't want to get you know use the ruler and things like that and you just wanted to do maybe a small vignette of this painting that's fine too. But you do it the way you want to do it. You're the artist. You can take what I do here on YouTube and kind of spin it off in your own directions and uh, whatever makes you happy and uh, whatever, you know, is going to work for you as an artist. Um, but right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece, just a bit of tape and, and go right across here. I'm going to get this large section of wall here. And um, this could help to kind of keep things a little more... Um, straight and also too we can concentrate on um, some of the lines here so what you can always do too it's a lot easier to concentrate on your um, your your drawing when you're not painting so before we go in and start painting you can always go in and shade in areas where the dark darks are so that we don't there's a lot of lines on this paper so if you can go in and shade with pencil, you're never going to see it when you paint over it with a dark color paint. But this way you keep yourself on track so that when you start putting down brush strokes, you're not going to start going off and doing another line that you, you didn't intend to do. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So over here too is the same thing. This is the dark window sash here across and then this is the dark wall over here. So you can just do that with a pencil just to give yourself some kind of like notes on your paper with pencil lines which you're going to paint over and no one's ever going to see them. Uh, so you can do that there so that you kind of have this sash of the window here correct and right in the right spot you need it. And then again this is a large bit of dark here and I think those are really the main darks that we have. And uh, what else do we have here? I think I think we can put a line down here and that's going to maybe be where the window is, the bottom of the window. So we can kind of, we can do a little bit of improv improvising along the bottom of this painting here. We don't have to get too exact. We definitely know we want to have this lamp above here looking good. And uh, I think that's good. Let's, let's try this tape though here just so we can get this first bit of really dark paint on there without worrying too much. I'll use a, sm a little bit smaller brush here. So we started out with a really wide brush for our first bit of washes. You noticed we use like a, a one inch wide. That's a one inch wide. Uh, we use the Princeton Art and Brush Company brushes you can get online like a five or six brush pack for like maybe $10, $15. Synthetic brushes, they work great, and these are the ones that I use when I'm, you know, working with my Prang palette and I'm working with more of an inexpensive beginner style. Uh, this is the Extreme Beginner Series, you know, you're not going to go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on brand new, really fancy brushes. You want to start out with some humble, you know, inexpensive gear first, you know, inexpensive palette, inexpensive brushes. Paper is more important. I'm using Arches Rough Paper here. I think. If you want to spend a little bit extra, spend some really, you know, use some really good paper. Paper really goes a long way with your artwork, with your watercolor paintings. I think paper is the most important thing in the beginning that you'd want to use good paper. You can use, again, synthetic brushes like this, the Princeton Art and Brush Company brush sets. They come with the round brushes. The, these are all three square brushes. The Prang Ola 16 set comes with this round brush here, which is great for details. So, you know, you get a good inexpensive bit of brushes. You get one brush for free with your Prang Oval 16 set. And you get your paints. This is beautiful paints to work with. And if you get some good paper like Arches or Fabriano paper, you're all set. Because if you use really good paper, it helps you tremendously. Your paintings look so much better with really good paper. I can't even describe to you how much 
paper really makes a huge difference with your paintings when you're using like an Arches or Fabriano paper. Um, so again, I'm shifting down to a 5 8 inch flat brush or square brush from the 1 inch. The 1 inch got us the whole first wash, our first glazing light wash. Now we're going to shift over to this smaller flat brush here. And we're going to get these darks in over here. Let's bring back down our painting <clears throat> on our photograph here from the internet. And we're just going to get that into the frame. Like that. <clears throat> and let's go. Let's grab some darks. Brown. Some black. Not too much black though. This black is so powerful. It can really take over your whole painting if you use too much of this black in this prang set. So just a touch of that black should be fine. Brown. So let's mix this to black and the brown. Just a little smidgen of the black. Uh, orange. Let's use some orange. Let's use some blue and purple. Blue and purple and red. So we want a really good dark. And again, I will use some of that black in there. And uh, some gold and some yellow too. And orange. And I think that's good. And you can notice here in my palette, there's no puddles of water whatsoever. I'm using like almost straight, straight paint here. Just almost straight paint. No water. Just a damp brush basically. And then we just go on here. And let's just start going right across this area here with all these darks. And we have that tape down so that we can really get a good chunk of this dark right away in our painting. And I'll just mix some more darks and browns, touch of black, not too much black, oranges, reds, blues, purple, just anything dark. Grab that off the palette and just get it right onto that paper like so. And then once you have that first bit of dark on your and you can scratch in a couple lines with with your fingernail if you want to. And then once you do that, you just lift off that tape. And there you go. You have your first major beautiful dark there on your um, painting. And then you can start going in. And then we can add just a touch more water into this here. And we'll put some blue. In. And we'll start. And there's a green there with this uh, person's shirt. is kind of a green. And then you just start working that right into the um, the darks here. And I'm just using the flat brush. And you can see that you can really, a flat brush really can do a great job with what you need to accomplish. And uh, And then I'll do more darks like this and just start blending it in. But that all blends into that there. Then I dampen the brush maybe a little bit and, and just kind of add a little bit of water to it maybe just to kind of... Now here what I'll do is I'll sh shift over to a round brush. We're going to use that Prang Oval 16 round brush that we have. Now we're going to go in and we're going to try to get some uh, flesh tones. Red, orange, yellow. And let's get some flesh tones in here. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to get that flesh color for the for our figure, like that. And I will Try to get that nose shape there just a little bit. Okay, and that's pretty good. And we blend it in like that. Perfect. And then we'll keep going. We'll, um, we'll grab some more of the darks here. And... Uh, And then we'll do the same thing too. We're going to get some more water here and plenty of darks. Brown, black, orange, red, blue, purple. 
all the darks that you can see in your palette that look really dark. Any of those are fine. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this here. This is dark here. You can also go back in and grab some more tape if you want. And set that tape back down again. To get a straight line if you need to, that's fine. So you can see, I'm just getting those darks in, large chunks of darks here, large bits of dark. And there we have it. Look how good that looks. Now we have we have our darks really working for our, to our advantage. Um, this looks like a bit of um, yellow, orange, and a bit of that brown there for our shirt over here. So this gentleman's. He's blending right into that wall, too, over here. And there's some... And then we can do the same thing. Let's get some flesh tones here. Some reds and... And his hat, hat is there, so we have a bit of a brim of the hat. And there's quite a bit of light on the top of his hat from the window, so we want to try to capture that a little bit. So he's pretty much good there, and we have some flesh tones for the arm. And again, we don't have to go too, too much detail here. I think that's fine. If we can get this much done, we're really in good shape. So the next thing we're going to do is we're probably going to want to use some tape again. So I'm going to take some tape and we'll get that sash of the window up here in. I'll use two pieces of tape. Just put them right across like that for the sash of the window up here. Perfect. I'll grab some more of those darks and we'll just go right like this. And this will give you a real advantage to keeping really good straight lines with your architecture here. If we can, if we can keep these really nice straight lines and square lines, it really helps the painting a lot. Okay, there we go, looking good. So now I think we are looking pretty good here. Do some of this here. Again, you can use your paintbrush as like a um, sculpturing tool. You can add paint to areas to kind of make things look better and you can add volume to some of your portions of your figures. Like I added just a little bit to the bottom of this person's uh, neck area to make it look a little better. And um, everything else looks good over here on this figure. And then over here, um, I noticed there's some dark darks under here. So I'll go across here carefully to get a good straight line like that. And then I'll leave a little bit of light on the top of the arm there. And that is looks pretty good. And the next thing we can do is 
we can start. Um, let's take a break. Now that we have this much completed, you can kind of see how it is looking like it's coming together really nicely. We have the real solid dark darks. The window sash, the wall, the wall over here on the right hand side, the two figures, which are um, the light is coming through the window, so you're seeing mostly dark for your figures. Mostly darks. A little bit of flash tones, but for the most part. And um, we could add a little bit of flesh tone here. And then since we have this here, um, I think everything is uh, looking good. Um, this could be darker here, that like that, that's darker there. And you can also use some white paint to do some corrections when we're done toward the end of the painting and we'll show you how to do that too as well. Using a little bit of titanium white, titanium white paint, titanium white paint with a little bit of yellow ochre uh, in the paint to make some corrections and maybe You'll, you'll, it'll go a long way. You'll notice that when you use titanium white with a little bit of yellow ochre uh, or a little bit of touch of orange in there, you'll, you'll be able to do some really beautiful corrections and some highlights too, some really gorgeous ornamental highlights in your painting. So let's uh, come back in just a few minutes. Again, I want to take another break. We've done a lot of work so far painting here. And uh, once we come back, we'll actually um, get started again with some more details on the left side here, which are going to be very minimal. We're going to kind of keep this very abstract over here. And then we'll finish up with some details in the window here. And I think that'll be it. We'll be actually completed. All right, so we're kind of wrapping up here. And um, I just wanted to mention, uh, again, if you like these videos and you're happy with um, our content here on my channel, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button on the right-hand side below. Um, that just means you'll stay in contact with me here and all of us here as we're working, painting together in watercolor, everything watercolor on this channel, whether we're doing some uh, cafe scenes, figures, portrait paintings, we do boats, landscapes, seascapes, we do, um, you know, everything you can imagine, flower paintings, still life paintings, everything in watercolor. Uh, I know you're going to enjoy all the content here that we do and we're always kind of shifting and changing different types of content so you get a good feel for all the different things that watercolor are or watercolors are really famous for which is all kinds of subject matter and just really having a great time fun time getting the washes on and the colors the beautiful colors and the um techniques that we use in watercolor so let's get uh, get back in here and kind of finish up here i think we're really um on a good trajectory here to finish up strong and what I would mention here is when we're looking at this photograph here as you can see um, as an artist you have the liberty to change things anytime you want to when you're in the middle of a painting or at the beginning of the painting or when you're finishing up your painting always remember that you have the you're the artist it's your painting you're in control you can change things if you think something's going to really look good and you want to change your painting you know where you thought it was going to be one way when you started always feel free to maybe do something a little different because it's a lot about experimenting when you're painting in uh, watercolor. You know, you want to experiment as you're going. Uh, maybe you don't always experiment every time, but every once in a while you might want to experiment, you know, you might, you might want to change something and say, you know what, I think it's going to look a little better if I change the original thought of I was going to paint everything just like I see it in this photograph. Well, now I'm thinking I'm going to put some darks on the left side here because I think it's going to look better than leaving this all lighter tonal values on this left side over here. So for some reason I think it's going to look better if I make some of these uh, lines uh, on the left side of this painting darks. So let me do that. So I'm going to go in, grab some more darks. I'm <clears throat> going to mix some more brown, touch of black, orange, red, orange, orange, red, blue, purple, um, more brown, and black, blue, okay, so what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to take this and just do some more darks this way. And I'm going to carefully do it like that. And then I just kind of smooth that like that. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. And again, I think I'm going to carry this line right across here. I think I want to leave this line straight across. I think that'll look better if I can leave this line pretty much straight across here. So let's do that. So here I go up top with another line here with a, like a window, something like a window, like that. And then this over here I'm going to leave almost like a highlight of some sort, like of light. orange and different things like that and then I'll just kind of fill that in like so and I try to blend this in a little bit kind of feather it in a little bit you know what I mean like kind of blend it so that it doesn't look so uh, Kind of like quilt work or something like that. So there we go. So now we have that line going there. And then maybe I'll use the um, Prang round brush. This I'm going to be very careful of. I want to try. You can also, again, you can take that tape. You can always use some tape. I'd be careful though if it's still wet. I think we can get this. Uh, this is all dry here, so I can rest my hand on the paper here. This is all dry, this whole section over here. And we can just take this line and you do it like a little bit at a time. You do like a half inch at a time of the line. Just like that. There we go. Maybe a little bit of black in the center area of that. That should be dark. Okay. And I think that looks good. And uh, let's see, we can finish up, I think, now. Let's get the um, some of the calligraphy going. I think we'll do... Oh, I wanted to do the, the lampshade. So I'm going to take some orange. And I'm going to do the lampshade, like an orange and blue. Kind of like a warm and cool. And we can add some more detail to that too once it dries. So that's good. A darker dark here. Let's get that lamp here like that. Like that. And then maybe we'll do some of the... We're going to do some of this. The windows. I'm going to do some careful lines here. You can use tape. You can use a ruler and run your paintbrush along a ruler if you want. But I'm, I'm not too worried. I think I can just... I'm always resting my hand somewhere on the table that I'm working on. I have an art table here. So I can always rest my hand on the table wherever I am as long as the paint isn't wet. So I'm always checking before I rest my hand down on my paper. I'm always looking to see if I'm resting my, you know, where is there any wet paint nearby? And then I sit, check it and then there's no, I don't see any wet paint. And then I rest my hand down on the paper. And that's how I can kind of carefully get these uh, lines straight like that. And then we'll do some more. We'll do our, our lettering. And I wouldn't take too much time with this. I would kind of just go quickly. We already we already penciled it in, so we kind of know we penciled in these letters first. So now we just go over them quickly because we don't want to be too careful. You know, sometimes going too careful with things looks not as good artistically if you can kind of just get some
Maybe I went over and made an incorrect line or something. Don't worry about it. Like that. That's good enough. Then you can always, uh, which is a, I like to do, is I empty my water. Right now I just emptied my water container and I went with some fresh water. So I have some fresh water in a bottle right next to me on my art table. Then I take some fresh water with my brush and I kind of tap some little bits of water on that lettering. And then I take a paper towel and I just lift up and do a couple little just to lighten it up a little bit. And then we'll do the uh, There we go. Then we have the um, curtain rod here. And again, my hand is resting on the paper, but I'm not going to do the whole... I'm going to do some of that line of the curtain rod, but not every bit of the line. Then I will get some of the orange and blue. Orange and blue. And I'm going to do some of the... Uh, some of the curtains here. Okay, there we go. We got, we have the curtains completed. Little bits of detail like that are really going to go a long way. Uh, maybe a little bit of a shadow under here where the lampshade is. Just to give it that little bit of curvature. And um, I'm trying to think what else we can do here. More of the... Um, this is the this is the that's the window pinstriping around the windows Then what we can do is um, we could add a few more details, and I think we will be good. Um, I am not going to go with too much more detail, I think. I think I'm going to leave it the way it is pretty much for the most part. You can kind of see, um, you know, I could do some more of these. Um, we could do some more of these uh, lines across here, the frosting on the window. We can do that. That might look good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's do those. And that's where we can do that. And we can also, over here, we'll do the same thing. We'll get some of those um, frost, the frosted glass kind of feel. I'm resting my arm and hand on the on the uh, board that I'm working on, masonite board. And 
I think that looks pretty good. I will kind of tend to say this is pretty good. Uh, let me take one more quick break. I need to get a drink of water and I'll be right back. All right, so we're now at the very, very final uh, part of our painting where we're just going to do a touch of some details. Um, after we've done, uh, you know, actually quite a bit of details already here, we're just going to do a few more. But the thing is, I wanted to maybe zoom into the painting a little bit more. So I don't think you'll need to see the palette anymore in this uh, video because we've seen all the colors we've used. I think I'm just going to use maybe a touch more of some, well, I might use some titanium white to do a couple highlights. And that's about it, maybe. So I'm going to move this uh, palette over here. So I'll do some shifting around over here uh, while things are, uh, pardon the momentarily, momentary uh, bit of chaos here. Uh, we saw the painting here. We'll zoom into this too as well. Maybe I'll do that in the beginning of the video. So. I'll zoom into the uh, photograph that we're using and then I'll zoom in here just so we can kind of see it a little clearer. All right, so this is the basic painting here we have. Cafe, gorgeous cafe scene. You can never go wrong with a cafe scene. It's fun and especially it's usually into the light. Usually cafe scenes you're seeing light coming through the windows if it's a, a daytime type of setting or if it's the evening time you're still probably going to see a lot of light coming through the windows from exterior light fixtures and things out in the street. And then usually cafes are kind of nicely lit, beautiful uh, lamp, uh, lamps and um, lighting, uh, more subdued, kind of, you know, mellow and a little bit darker, kind of that nice atmosphere. So uh, the thing I wanted to do here was just capture those last bit of details that we were going to do. Um, first thing I wanted to do was maybe I'm going to do a touch of uh, dark here for the. I'm gonna do a cigar. I think it looks good here. We'll have a cigar here. Like that. I wanted to do that because I think that hand that I created there and the elbow and the arm and the hand with that figure, I think that looks just perfect. A little bit of a cigar there. And then what I'll do is. Um, I will take some white and again I'm not going to go with too much detail beyond this. I think we've really captured a beautiful scene here in the cafe. I don't want to start going overboard with details. I can We can run into problems when we try to add too many details to a painting so let's leave it underdone. Um, I'll take my titanium white. So I have titanium white here and what I'll do is I'll just add a little bit of um, orange to the top of the tube of paint so that it just gives it that warm bit of color to the white. All right, that's good. And I think we can get a little bit of white on the top there of the hat for this figure. Maybe a touch of, maybe a touch of white there for that shoulder. Maybe another bit of light there. And um, what else can we do? I don't want to go overboard. I think that should be good for that. Did I want to do anything else here? Um, yeah, maybe a touch of... So what I'll do is I'll take some titanium white here and I'm going to go over to my palette and I'm just going to um, put a little bit of... I'll, I'll take a tissue or paper towel and I'll just clean a little spot off in my palette. And I'll put a little bit of titanium white in the palette in a clean spot. I want to do a little bit of smoke maybe where the, for the cigar. Like that. And then I'll splash on some fresh clean water on top of that titanium white paint I just put on there. And I'll just try to maybe smooth that out a little bit, the paint, like that. But I think that's fine. That will look good. 
And then I'll use, again, paper towel or tissue. If you happen to splash over a spot or two, you could lift up. And then I'll go over this area too, up here. And what that does is it kind of mellows out some of those lines. So that bit of smoke can really give us a bit of advantage of kind of mellowing out some of these dark darks here. Okay, so we have just a little tiny bit of detail, as you can see, with our titanium white mixed in with a touch of orange or yellow, like a yellow ochre. And that's it, you have it. You have the little bit of detail you needed. And I'll just... Like that. And we have a completed painting, so I'm... Really happy you joined me here to create this wonderful painting. It's a cafe scene. We covered every detail you can imagine to get this thing com accomplished uh, really well. Um, if you do this painting a few times, you'll notice that you might be able to do it a little more loosely. Maybe not as much work with rulers and things like that. You might be able to kind of create more of a looser feel with a little bit less perfectly straight lines. But I figured I would help you to get the straight, perfect lines you need first to capture the real essence of the architecture here. And then once you go beyond that, you can always loosen up a little bit, make things a little bit more carefree, and, and it gives it a little more of an artistic flair to it, you know? So it's up to you, you're the artist, you're gonna kind of give your own little interpretation of what I'm doing here. And uh, I'm sure you're gonna do well, and we'll see you soon on the next video. Bye-bye.